The effort to recall California Governor Gavin Newsom marking a major milestone. The petition officially surpassing the number of verified signatures needed and could land on the ballot this fall. Here to share her thoughts, Fox Nation host Tommy Lahren. Tommy, great to see you as always. Look, you know California extremely well. Do you think 50% of the voters there will vote yes to recall the governor and replace him with somebody else? You know, when I was living there a year ago, I would have said, uh, I'm not so sure because Californians tend to bury their head in the sand and ignore the obvious. You know, they elected Governor Gavin Newsom, knowing even what a horrible leader he was, knowing it would be bad for California. You know, they voted down a repeal of their gas tax. So I thought, you know, I just know I'm not sure about Californians. But I got to say, I am so incredibly proud of the state that I used to live in and what they've been able to do. And this ju just goes to show those that are living in other states that are being ruled by Democrat tyrants, you do have the power to make your voices heard. You do have the power to recall your leaders, unless you're in New York, which we'll talk about that in a moment. But this just goes to show that if enough people band together, even in a liberal state, they can make a stand and they can make a change. So I'm incredibly hopeful they will get rid of greasy Gavin Newsom and replace him with somebody that believes in freedom, that believes in the great golden state and is ready to make it free again. Uh, we can go ahead and pull up here the numbers just so folks at home can go ahead and take a look at them. But when you when you look at the data from the California Secretary of State's office, there have been 54 previous attempts to recall governors. Only one was successful, but that was back in 2003. So curious to see how this ends up playing out. But I'm curious also what you think was the breaking point for people in California to be able to go ahead and say, you know what, enough is enough. Well, certainly coronavirus. You know, when I lived in California for, for three years, there were a lot of problems. There was a homeless epidemic. We know that the, the regulations, the taxes were insane, the cost of living, the poverty rate. I mean, this has been a problem for years and years and years in California. But so many people were able to ignore it because the weather is nice. It's a beautiful state. They got great sports teams. And then COVID happened. And they realized the power that their leaders truly have. And they were uncomfortable with that abuse of power. And then, you know, Gavin Newsom's little little trip to French Laundry and his very expensive unmasked dinner with others. I really think that that sent a message to Californians that this man thinks that he is above them, that he's ruling them with an iron fist, and they were tired of it. And so I'm so glad that they were finally able to realize that COVID brought it in, problems in that state for many years prior, but at least they're starting to realize it. Mm. Gray Davis was pretty milk toast, replaced by a superstar in Arnold. See what yep. happens this time. Meantime, Tom, you got to get your thoughts on this. 2020 census shows Democrat-leaning state like California have lost House seats and Republican leaning states have gained them. There's the map right there. You see California minus one, Texas plus two. But you say conservatives should not be popping champagne just yet. Why do you say that? You know, I have so many folks that are saying this is so great. And I know normally I would agree with you, but because I live in Tennessee now and there are so many Californians coming here and because I have a lot of friends in Texas and Florida where all the liberals are fleeing to, I got to say, don't get too excited just yet. Because unfortunately, a lot of those folks that are leaving their tyrannical blue states and coming to our great red states, unfortunately, they have not learned their lesson. They are bringing their voting records and the policies that they loved in their liberal states that ruined their liberal states. They're bringing them with them. So so that's why I have to say be very cautious. We don't want our great red states like Tennessee or Texas. We don't want to turn them purple. So like I've told you guys so many times, if you want to come to Tennessee, if you want to come to Florida, if you want to come to Texas, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, please come and enjoy the free, wonderful states open for business. But please understand, don't vote for liberals and don't vote for the liberal policies that ruined your state. Otherwise, you're not going to have anywhere to flee to. And you're going to be spinning in circles. Great perspective. Tommy Lahren, as always, good to see you this morning. And don't forget, you can watch No Interruption with Tommy Lahren exclusively on Fox Nation. Tommy, I'll see you soon. Thanks so much, guys.